Well, good morning. Boy, that was weak. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. I know this is the beginning of spring break for most, and um, folks have uh, probably got ideas of where we're going or what we're doing. But put those aside just a minute this morning, will you? And let us focus on God's Word. Now, we are in chapter 25 of Matthew as we've been walking through the book of Matthew. And uh, we come to a, a, a parable of Jesus that's, that's really unlike any parable that he's given before. And it's a difficult one to deal with because what he says, <laughs> he's calling us sheep and goats. Yeah. So as I look out over the congregation, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> what did the preacher do this morning? He called me a goat. Uh, yeah, there you go. We're not going to do that. But, but what Jesus says in this to his disciples uh, is in continuing uh, the question of, Lord, what's going to happen at the end of all of this? What's going to happen when you do come back? And he's continued to explain this to them, and that's what he's done in a series of parables. And we come to this one, which is um, the last of those, and he has something to say about uh, the Son of Man judging the nations. So, if you will, look at verse 31 of chapter 25 with me, and let's read that this morning. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels, holy angels, with Him, then He will sit on the throne of glory, and all nations will be gathered before Him, and He will prepare them one from, uh, separate them one from another, as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Now, you got to know a little bit about something about uh, shepherding uh, to understand what he's saying here. Does anybody ever had any goats? You had goats? I know you got goats. You did have goats. You've had goats? No? Anybody else had goats? Who raised their hand? You had goats? Okay. One thing about goats, they smell. Yeah, they know. They, they smell. Uh, I, has anybody ever had any sheep? Sheep? You had sheep? Do they smell like goats? It's different, but it does. They, okay. I, have, I know nothing about sheep. I know nothing about goats except for what I read. And so uh, what you're going to get today is what I read in a book, not what I know personally. Ex well, except for maybe one goat. We ate him. Um, <laughs> we had a goat as a pet when I was a child, and, and Mom got tired of that stinking thing around the house and eating her flowers and all kinds of stuff, so we ate Mr. Jones. That was his name. Okay, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. I just thought you want to know that. Now, Jesus sits down, and his disciples had asked him a question, and the question was, Lord, tell us what's going to happen at the end of the age. And Jesus has talked about all kinds of different things. You're going to hear about wars and rumors of wars. You're going to see this fantastic uh, monument to God. This temple is going to be destroyed totally. There's not going to be one stone left on another. And we've seen through history some of those things happen. The Romans came in in 70 A.D. and tore the temple down totally, destroyed Jerusalem. There are all kinds of wars. We still have that today. We still have wars going on all the world. We have a very fresh one that we're uh, praying about and know uh, instantaneously what's going to happen uh, as it happens. In other words, we can see what's going on in Ukraine as it happens. That is beyond me, but we can do that. With all the stuff that, that we have done uh, in technology and, and communications, we can see exactly what's going on in Ukraine right now. I am so glad that they're not showing a bunch of that stuff. I think that would be really too much. It would be pretty grotesque. But, folks, that's been going on since Jesus told the disciples what was going to happen. But then he comes to one part of his explanation, the very last parable, and he says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory... And all the holy angels with him, and he will sit on the throne of his glory. He'll judge all of the nations. Now, if you look at that word nations, that means uh, peoples, all of the peoples of the earth. And he will judge them. And he says, and what he's going to do, he's going to separate them as a shepherd would separate the sheep from the goats. Now, I understand that in Jesus' day, 
they ran both of those together. They ran together. They, they were all together. They were mixed in together. But there's some things about goats and sheep that we need to understand before we go on. Sheep produces wool. Some of you may be wearing some of a sheep today. If you have wool on, you're wearing a sheep, part of a sheep. Sheep follow a, a shepherd. They have to have a shepherd. They graze on grass. They are naturally uh, animals that group together. Even if they didn't have a shepherd right there, they would group together. They're, they're that kind of animal. Now, goats, on the other hand, they produce milk. Anybody have a goat milk? I don't think it's very good, but they produce it. Goat's milk, goat's cheese, and hair. You, know, you ever heard of an Angora goat? That's the guy we get the sweater from, the Angora sweater. But they produce that, unlike wool. But the, the, a goat goes wherever he wants to. You can't shepherd a goat. They go wherever they want to, whenever they want to. Matter of fact, the shepherd has to follow them to make sure they don't get in trouble. And then a goat <clears throat> is naturally anything but a group animal. He will go his way. He will do whatever he wants to do. I was watching a little clip of, of some baby goats, little bitty baby goats. And I say what? One of them in the five was just, I don't know, he must have had sugar or something. He was hopping everywhere. He was even jumping on top of the other little goats and knocking them down. And the, the caption was, uh, he's a little ADA. <laughs> so I don't know, but, but they're, they're cute to watch. But there are differences between goats and sheep in nature. Their DNA is not the same. They're just different. And so Jesus said, I'll use an example so you'll understand what I'm talking about. But when he does this, he gets a little deep. And we've got to get a little deep this morning to understand what Jesus is saying. He says he will separate and divide like the shepherd does from the sheep and the goat. Verse 33 says, and he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Someone asked me one time, Brother Gordon, why do you go to the right side when you talk about something good and the left hand when you talk about something bad? It's natural. Now, that would be my left and your right or my right and your left. I understand that. But Jesus said, the good sheep will go on the right, the goats will will go on the left. And this is what he says about them. In verse 34, then the king, talking about Jesus, will say to those on the right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Now, that's pretty easy to understand. As he goes in, he looks at the sheep, he separates the sheep from the goats, and he says to those on his right hand, the goats, come, come inherit the kingdom that the father has prepared for you. And they were kind of, you know, they, they kind of misunderstood what he was talking about. He says, listen, verse 35 says, Jesus said, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Now, they said all this stuff we've done in verse 37, the righteous will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you, and he makes the whole list, hungry, sick, naked. When did we do all that? And his simple answer was, in verse 40, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say unto you, insomuch as you did it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Now there are some naturally good-hearted people in this world. They think of other people. They are very generous with their time, their money, their talents. They would do anything for you, but it doesn't necessarily make them a sheep. Are you with me? Doesn't necessarily make you a sheep. Because there is a difference between doing something because you're a good person and doing something because you're motivated more than just being a good person. You see, Jesus said the king separated them out and he separated them out according to what? The good sheep and the goats. Now, I've got a question for you this morning. Do you think you're a sheep? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Do you think you're a sheep or a goat? Because our churches are full of sheep, and they're also full of goats. 
And the reason is, is because some people have come to know Christ as their Savior, and they are motivated to do good things because of the Spirit that lives within them. And they are true followers and worshipers of Jesus Christ. And then they're goats. Jesus asked the same question, or the, or the goats asked the same question of Jesus or the king here in this passage. And he said uh, in verse 41, Then he will also say to those on the left, Department, uh, Depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, right there tells me that Christ doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He didn't want anybody to go to hell. Matter of fact, he prepared hell for the angels of the devil and the devil. At the end of time, he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. He's going to be destroyed along with those who follow him. You can say angels, you can say demons, whatever you want to say. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire. But the problem is, those who did nothing with Christ never made a decision for Christ, never asked him to come into their heart, guess where they're going? Coat. On the coattails of the devil. They'll go right in with him. Yeah. But that was not God's purpose. God's purpose was to make sure that all should come to repentance and knowledge of Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. So, if you look at that list of things that the king is saying, you were hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. All of those things that a good person would do, I'm sure the goats probably did that too. Those who were good natured, those who had a kind heart. But it has nothing to do with what they did. Matter of fact, if you read this, you would come to think, well, if I do this, 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 and this, I will surely go to heaven. It's a list of works, is it not? Well, we understand, though, through God's Word, that we are not saved through the graces of our own, but by the grace of God and the faith we have in His grace through Christ Jesus. And it's not of any works that we do. So why do we have something like this? Why is Jesus talking about the good things we do or the good things we don't do? I don't want anybody to go away from here this morning saying we can get to heaven by doing good stuff. We can't. Then what is Jesus saying? What he's actually saying here is that, listen, the motivation for you doing those good things is what you need to consider. Now, this is a commercial. We're having a work day, the 9th of April. Brother Paul and the, the ministry announced, well, he's going to tell you about that. You can come up here all day long and do all kind of good stuff. You can make sure we got painted whatever we need to paint or, or swept whatever needs swept or repaired whatever needs repair. And that's good stuff. But if you do it, not motivated to do it by the love of Christ and the spirit that lives in you, it's just good stuff. You remember back in the book of Matthew it says that many are going to come saying to me, Lord, Lord, I've done all this stuff for you. And he's going to look at them and say, depart from me. I never knew you. He's talking about the goats. He's talking about the goats. You can do all this stuff, but if it's not motivated by the love for other people. I think the Bible also makes sure we understand that the reason we love other people, the reason we can, can love them is because God loved them first, and God loved you first, and we ought to have love for our fellow man in our hearts and lives because of Jesus. Now, I know there are some unlovable people in this world. Some of you may be sitting here. I don't know. I'm not calling you a goat. I'm saying you're unlovable. But because of Christ, I can love you. Does that make sense? Because what did Christ do for us when he came into our lives? When we came to that point where we understood that we were lost, we were sinners, we needed God, we needed Christ in our lives, and we said, God, forgive me of my sin, come into my heart, send your spirit into my life. The Bible says we were changed. We were a new creation in Christ. And because of that, he put his love in us, which also spills over 
to other people we meet. So when we do something, our motivation, it may be that I don't like, uh, don't get me wrong, I might not, <laughs> oh. oh, I'm going to say it. I might like, not like one of you, but because of Christ, I can love you through Christ. And I can learn to like you and love you like Christ does. I could not do that of my own. Now, a goat can do a good job of pretending, but they cannot do it and be motivated for the right reason. Sometimes goats are motivated to get their own way. Sometimes goats are pretending so that they can get glory for themselves. Sometimes goats pretend all of their life so people will look at them and say, surely that person is going to be with Christ. But you see, it's not about what the thing, it's not about the things we do. It's the motivation for those things. And so when Jesus gives the example of the sheep and the goats, he says to the disciples, listen, it's not about the things you do, but it's about the motivation for doing those good things. Uh, turn over to uh, 1 Peter with me. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. Um, let's see. Verse 22, since you have purified your souls in obey, obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. You know what that said? He says, since you have purified your souls in the, obeying, in the obeying of the truth through the Spirit. In other words, you have obeyed the voice of God who says to you, you're a sinner, you need to come to repentance, and when you do that, I will place my Spirit in you. We are to do what? We're to love the brethren. Amen. Now, back over in Matthew, when the king starts talking about his sheep, he said, <clears throat> These people you've done this for, you did it unto the least of my brethren. You've done it to me. Now, that's very important for us to understand. Because if we don't do it to the brethren, those who are like us, if I don't love Justin because he's my brother in Christ, how could I do it to someone else that we don't know? We can because of that passage in First Peter. We have come to know Christ. He has come into our heart, and he has filled us with his spirit. And what does he say? He says he has <clears throat> been born again, not of corruptible seed. Anything born of this flesh is corruptible. Anything born of the spirit has been made perfect in Christ. So because of that, the word of God abides in you and lives in you forever. That's what drives us. In other words, the sheep follows the shepherd. Again, I'm not a sheep guy. I don't know anything about them. But what I know through the Word of God is that sheep don't go anywhere unless the shepherd guides them and tells them where they're going. You know, the 23rd Psalm is a beautiful psalm. It talks about that. The Lord is my shepherd. And he says, because he's my shepherd, he provides for me water. He provides for me food. He provides me safe place to go. He is always there to search for me if I get lost. All of those things our shepherd does for us. But you know what shepherd does for a goat? They chase after him all the time. They're not so much grass eaters, but everything eaters. I remember at home in East Texas, we have... Pine sapling thickets. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They're pine trees. They're just so thick you can't walk through them. And you can't do that because there's a lot of undergrowth there. There's a lot of yopon trees. People use yopon for decorations out here. I can't, I, I don't understand it. <laughs> Back where I come from, it's a curse. But you know what you do if you've got a place like that? You get some goats. Because the goats will roll right through that underbrush, and as high as they can reach, there won't be anything green. They'll eat it all. They'll take it all. And no shepherd is going to lead them to do it. They'll do it on their own because why? they got their own agenda. That's what Jesus is saying about this. The goats have their own agenda. 
And because of that, they're not ne necessarily prone to, to feeding people when they need to be fed or clothing people when they're naked or, or, or going to see somebody when they're sick. They just do their own thing. And so as they begin to think about what Jesus said, the disciples should have come to the conclusion that we come, we're coming to today is that if you're either a sheep or a goat in your actions. Our actions speak louder than our words. You remember we were preaching a, a few Sundays back about uh, practice what you preach. <laughs> and what we said in that was, whatever you say, that's okay, but your actions are what really matters to everybody else. I can say that I'm a sheep all day, but if my actions don't prove it, I'm a goat. Now, I ask you again, don't raise your hand. Are you a sheep? Are you a goat? There may be people watching our live stream today that's sitting there going, I can't believe he's preaching about goats and sheep. Get the point. The point is we are only good because of God. If that wasn't the case, we would all be goats. But Christ sent Jesus to die for us so that we might understand his love and accept his grace through faith and become one of his sheep. All through the Bible, God talks about we are his sheep. We are in his pasture. The example is there. It's plain as the day, the nose on your face because he says, sheep follow the shepherd. And they do it automatically. I have a friend who has eight children. They're all his own, not adopted. They're all his. I pray for his poor wife. But those children are so well behaved, when he says something, that's exactly what they do. Why? He's taught them. He's taught them. They follow him. I mean, it's just like a, a little bunch of ducks. You ever seen ducks follow the mama? They'll get right behind, they'll follow in that line, and they'll follow that mama, and they won't vary from that. Because why? She's taking them where she wants to go, and she's going to make, make sure they're safe, make sure they're fed, make sure she knows everything about them. You know, there's someone who leads the goats. We don't talk about it much. But there's someone who leads the goats. That's that person who is the devil, who doesn't care how scattered they are. He doesn't care what they do, just so they don't do it for the right reason. The devil does not want us to love each other. The devil does not want us to love anybody else. The devil doesn't want us to do good things. He wants us to do what we think are good things, not what God says are good things. And we are motivated to do that because of self, because of our self. You know, Jesus, when he says we're supposed to think of others before we think of ourselves, that's just not a suggestion for Christians. That's a commandment. Because we are to be servants first because he was a servant. He told the disciples, I didn't come to be served I came to serve. And he served even unto the death on the cross. He served. He gave. And so we as his followers, we are his sheep who follow him. It's interesting too that Jesus talked about all these parables and then he said the son of man when he comes. It's not the, it's not the shepherd, it's the Son of Man. It is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. One of these days he's going to come. He's going to establish a throne here on earth. And when he does that, he is going to be the king, the judge. You know what judges do? What a king does? He decides what happens. If you violated the law, if you violated the mores of society, if you violated, he decides what happens to you. I don't know who it was and I, I don't even know names, but I was watching a court case where they were fixing to judge this person who had killed uh, another person. And she stood there 
and the judge said, uh, you're guilty of this, you're guilty of this, and so we'll sentence according to the jury tomorrow. She was convicted of, of first-degree murder and some other charges. And when they read the verdict, the verdict was guilty on all charges, and the sentence was 16 years in prison. Now, 16 years for a life. That's how corrupt our society has become. Because it used to be if you killed someone, you gave up your life. If you did it with malice, you gave up your life. But nowadays, I can just see the devil just sitting there smiling. You only get 16 years, and you probably can get out with parole for good behavior. But you see, he delights in those things that are not good. He delights in leading us astray to do things that are motivated by self and our own self-interest, not in those things that would serve others before us. Okay, well, let's wrap this up. Jesus, in the 14th, 45th verse of that passage in chapter 25 says, Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say you as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. That's when the goats ask him, When did we do this, Lord? And they say, Well, you didn't do it. That's the point. You didn't do it. And since you did not do it, you have no part of me. And look at the last verse, 46. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. That boils it down. The sheep go to eternal life. The goats go to hell. I can't look at any of you and see your heart. I'm so glad I can't. But Christ can. And right where you sit this morning, you know whether or not you fit the sheep mold or the goat mold, right? And I tell you what, people go all their life without ever sitting and contemplating, <clears throat> do I do what I do because I love and I'm motivated by Christ, or do I do what I do because I'm like a goat? I do anything and everything I want to. No one's going to shepherd me. I've heard people, when they get of a certain age, they're tired of doing good stuff, and they're going to do exactly what they want to do. You know what happens to those kind of people? They usually wind up in a lot of trouble. Their life in turmoil. Sometimes wind up in the penitentiary because they do exactly what makes them happy. Never thinking about anybody else. But what Jesus was saying to these disciples was, one of these days... It may be in your lifetime. It may not be in your lifetime. And I can say the same thing to you and I today. It may be in our lifetime or it may not be in our lifetime. It, regardless, one of these days, Christ is going to come back. And when he comes back, that's it. There is no more chance. There is no more time. There is no more earth as we know it. It will all be run by Jesus Christ the King. And he won't rule like a king of our time rules or a president of our time rules. He will be fair and just, and he will do that out of love for all the peoples of the nation. God doesn't send anybody to hell. God doesn't confine anybody. It's the person himself that does that. Get personal this morning. The personal thing is this. Are you motivated to love others because of the love of Christ that lives within you? Because if you don't have his love within you, you can't do that. No matter how hard you try. I had a real good friend. He's still a good friend today. He's a Christian today. But he told me, he said, Gordon, I do what I do because <clears throat> that's what I want to do. I said, but oh, you're thinking all wrong. If you do what you want to do, there's going to be somebody out there that you don't love. You need to love them in spite of what you think. And you can't do that by yourself. Think about the person you've had the most trouble with in your life. Not me or your wife or not that kind of person. But the person that you have run into and you just can't stand them. Left to ourselves, 
it's impossible to love them. But because of Christ who lives in us, we can love them and we can pray for them and we can pray for their salvation with the love of Christ. Why? Because they're a goat. And you can do this today. They're a smelly old goat. They go where they want to do. They do what they want to do. No one can lead them, but they desperately need a shepherd. Aren't you glad we have our shepherd? Aren't you glad that we've already settled that in our lives as Christians? We know exactly what's going to happen because what's going to happen is what Christ wants to happen, and we leave it in his hands. We don't worry about it. I know people worry about the second coming of Christ. What's it going to be like? Are we going to be here as a church? Are we going to go through the tribulation? Are we going to have all the pains? And, and it? Folks, let me tell you something simple. I had a professor that I had for this very study in the New Testament. And we got to this passage, and I said, Dr. Simmons, do you know exactly what's going to happen? He said, no. I don't think anybody knows exactly what's going to happen. Well, as we study this, it gives us a little glimpse, doesn't it? He said, sure it does. But I want to tell you something, Gordon, and I was probably all 19 years old. I want to tell you something, Gordon. It's going to happen just as God wants it to happen. And if we know Christ is our Savior, we don't have to worry about that. I know people who love to study the book of Revelation. Revelation is not, <laughs> it's interesting, but it's not the all, be all of everything. It, 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 it's going to be what God says is going to happen. And I don't need to know that. Remember that watch I told you about a couple of weeks ago? I know how to tell time, but I don't know how it works inside. I know what God says is going to be true. One of these days, Christ is going to come. And I have faith and trust enough into him to know that he's doing what he does for my good. And for all of those who put their faith and trust in him. So the question is, are you sheep? Or are you a goat? If you're a goat, there's still hope. You know why? Because Christ has not come back yet. So there's hope today. If you want to turn away from that life and come toward Christ and be a part of the flock, you can do that. And I'm talking very agrarian. I know that. But that's what Jesus told the disciples. They understood that. You can become part of the flock. You can have a shepherd. You can have direction. And you can know that the end of everything is going to be okay because it's secure in him. So, I've got one statement I will read, then we're going to quit. If what your life says you believe differs from what your mouth says you believe, God's not in it. Let me read that again. If your life says what you believe differs from what your mouth says you believe, God's not in it. Because you see, folks, even when we know Christ, even what we say is going to come out in what we do. That's a good test. That's a good test. It's like a friend. I'm your friend until I need something. And that's not a true friend at all, is it? If you can't provide it for me, you can't be my friend anymore. People's actions... Tell us exactly who they are. That's what Jesus said to the disciples. And it's not the actions so much and the good things you do. It's why you're motivated to do them. Yeah. It's why we're motivated to give people who don't know Christ the gospel. It's why we do good things because, well, it, it says in 1 John, doesn't it? Uh, that passage in First John, <laughs> or I'm sorry, or sorry, James. For thus also by itself, or faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But some will say, "You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith that works, and I will show you my faith by my works." <laughs> Big difference. I can show you that I have faith by the works that I do. And the works doesn't save me, but my faith does. Make sense? So do you have faith this morning? Do you have faith? 
And where do you wind up on the separation? When I was in grade school, I went to a, a community school. Joan did too. She was, she was in the same room. We had three grades in one room. And when recess came, we all piled out, got on the playground. And if we were going to play football, the boys, if we were going to play uh, whatever we were going to play, somebody would be the person who chose the people they wanted to be on their team, right? And we all stood there. And sometimes it went, everybody got picked but me because nobody wanted me. That I was slow. I was small. I started school when I was five years old. For about four months, I was five years old. Have you ever had that feeling? You're there, but nobody picked you. You're there, and you're ready, and you're willing, but nobody picked you. God will always pick you. That's the comfort we have in Christ Jesus. You will always have someone there for you. So, are you sheep? Are you goat? I can't decide that for you. Only you can do that. Whether you're sitting here this morning or watching on live stream, that's the question. 